ask that you would take your children beyond the language of this message into the power of the truth in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice. All ye that are upright in heart, all ye that have made him your choice, his sadness and sorrows depart. Be glad. Be glad. Oh, rejoice. Rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord and rejoice. much for choir thank you for always coming through her text review today her topic is paradise and i'm excited our text review is in luke chapter 16 from verse 19 to 26. Um, in the past few weeks we've been talking about um the goalpost of this journey we've talked about the spotless bride we've talked about um uh, the marriage supper of the lamb we've talked about the days of tribulations you know the marriage of the lamb, yeah, we've talked about the goalpost, you know, um, the conclusion of the matter, basically. And, and I bring you respite, you know, we've talked about the heartbeats. I was, we're doing Sunday script review, I was joking that I get to, you've all done the hard jobs, <laughs> I get to come and talk about the very interesting part, the place of rest, you know. Um, but if you survive, if you make sure that you're not part of the days of tribulation, then Maybe your life will be easier and you can, you know, enjoy paradise well. So, let's read our um, text for review or, yeah, let's do text review first. Luke 16 verse 19. It says, there was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torments and hates, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for i am tormented in this flame but abraham said son remember that in your lifetime you received your good things and likewise lazarus evil things but now he is comforted and you are tormented and besides all this between us and you there is a great gulf fixed so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot or can those who those from here pass to us praise the lord Memory verses from that, not from the same, no, not from the same chapter, but Luke 23, 43. It says, and Jesus said unto him, verily I say unto you, unto thee, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Let's read the memory verse together. And Jesus said unto him, Luke 23, 43. Shoot. And Jesus said unto him, verily I say unto thee, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Let's go back to our, our text for review. You know, I, was, um, so I always refer to um, Bible study preview because um, I would have said something there. So I um, uh, would have shared something there. Anyway, I was saying that, uh, you know, usually when you're thirsty, when you're running a race, um, and you're tired, not even thirsty, you're famished, you're tired, whatever, and you know the Holy Communion-sized cup, and someone offers to give you a drink in that cup, and just say, just to make you feel better. You know, you tell yourself, you're going to punish me with this. I'm almost home anyway. Do you agree? And say, I'm almost home anyway. I'm just going to manage and get a proper drink, right? Like, I'm just going to put myself together and hold it, you know. I'm just going to not take this, you know, and just enjoy a drink. Because once you give me this, in what in while people say, once you give me this, I even feel more thirsty, you know. But you know what it means for someone to say, knowing that there is no assurance there will be another tip of water, and say, I will still do with a tip of your finger. I hope that that puts the burden of the reality of hell in your mind for a moment. And because it did to me. 
even though I've read that scripture over and again. When I read it again, and like I said, I love the scriptures. It's very potent. If you read it a million times, the power, the potency always come back to you. So I just wanted to reemphasize that because I wanted to put that burden in your heart just so that you know what is at stake. A place that you would, a place that someone would desire, not you would desire a tip, knowing that there is no assurance they will get another one. And what, it, when you are so, so dehydrated and someone gives you a tip, it would make virtually no difference. So there is a place where, so at the end of it, we will not all go to the same place. Hopefully we all go, but the whole world won't go to the same place. Some will go to, you know, where there's torment and others will go to um, a place of relief. And it is that place of relief we want to talk about today. And introduction says, paradise is a place of blessing where the righteous go after death. The word paradise is usually used as a synonym for heaven. Paradise is a place of rest for believers. It is a place where believers are united with Christ and his father. And that's that scripture we just read. That says, Verily I say unto thee, Today shall thou be with me in paradise. Jesus used paradise as a sim synonym for heaven. And the apostle Paul wrote of someone, probably himself, who was caught up in paradise. So paradise refers to heaven. Paradise is a place of rest. And I deliberately sang that in the introduction, uh, the hymn I sang at the start, rather, because I wanted you to rejoice. I wanted you to be excited about where you're going to. That song says, rejoice. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice. All ye that are upright. That, in, in the real context, you're not rejoicing because of now. You're rejoicing because of where you're going to. If you're upright, don't worry, relax. Don't worry, it's only a matter of time. There's another hymn that I love um, that says, toil on. Um, if, I, if I quickly borrow this, it's in Yoruba. It says, um, means that the play, a time of rest is coming. A time, of, a time when you can relax is coming. Just keep walking, keep walking. That's what that mashishelo means. Just keep walking, keep pushing, you know. Um, and when we're talking about this topic, when I initially read it to myself, initially, what came to me? Who, who attended the boarding school here? Show of hands, you did, of course. Uh, I've got my seniors in school here in this church, by the way. Do you know? My seniors in secondary school. Um, so I know some. If you, yes, so oh, you don't know. Not just one, by the way. <laughs> but some of them were not so close to me in school. Um, so, um, so, yeah, boarding school. Right. So in boarding school, you know the last... And I can look at their faces. Um, Sister Onye was my senior in secondary school. Um, so I can look at their faces. You know, Sister Onye, in the last year of, in the last week before we go home, after our exams, you know that one week or about 10 days, if you're lucky to finish your exam earlier, you have more days than the rest and as a boarding student. And then you are practically jobless. And you're just sitting in fours and twos and you're talking about what the holiday would look like. Now imagine that those days, you, but, and then you don't have provisions, you don't have all the snacks, it's all finished. And the smart ones probably have their cabin biscuits and Gary or something left. Uh, the ones who are able to manage stuff, you know. <laughs> and then there is, a, there is a lot, I would say the greatest scene in boarding house happened that week. I used to tell my husband, if somebody would just sit and give us lies, say, my father's house, we have pools. And the rest of us say, mm -hmm. you know, we just sit in, you know, there's no light. We just sit in corners and be discussing. But more importantly, let me go back to the crux of the matter. In that week, you're, so let's imagine that your, your father has promised you that during the holidays, you're going to go to your uncle in Abuja. Um, imagine that you're coming from a regional area, whatever, and you're going to a capital city. Um, and so you released the joy of going to Abuja. And so you tell yourself, when, when the holiday starts, you know, you know, and even when you are studying during school, you are telling yourself, I'm going to do well, right? Because of what? Because I'm going to Abuja, because I'm going to Sydney, because I'm going to wherever, because I'm going to what? Asirok, whatever it is, because you can look forward to it. Another context is um, coming from a developing country, you know, and you've gotten maybe a PR or something, gotten something to move to a country that you love to live and raise your children or start a family in. And you have six months to go. You know, in that six months, <laughs> I was reading something on Facebook. Someone said that he had a friend who is always usually violent or aggressive in traffic. And when somebody starts cursing them, are you this, are you that? Then he's gotten a visa to travel to a, a country. Uh, and so he was with that friend. And somebody tried to bash him and he didn't say anything. I said, ah, Kule, you did not say anything. He said, ah. <laughs> he says, don't, don't worry. <laughs> 
Just don't worry. The devil is trying to set a trap. Just let me get there safely. <laughs> just let me get there safely. Or you have just been promoted at work and you have six months, you know, in that current role. And, you know, your manager comes into the room and says, in that new role, these are the pecs of the job. You're going to have your own chauffeur. You're going to get your own this, you know. And you just sit and get excited about that place. And I like all the smiles you have given me and all the laughters you have given me because this was what I was looking for. Because we are not sure we'll go to heaven tomorrow. But we can look forward to heaven. We can sit together and say, do you know like boarding school students say, ah, Sister Mutrayo, ah, heaven will be sweet too. You know, ah, paradise will be sweet. Ah, in my home mansion, I'll come and be looking at you. Because we are not sure we'll go tomorrow. But we can look ahead, you know, and say there is a place. Paradise is like a place. Heaven is a place where you've been running. You know, you've been running. And then you finally say, ah, ah, ah. That is what everyone will look like. When we catch our breath and say, after all, ah, ah, I, ah, I got there. <laughs> I saw a video of someone who moved to Canada. Did you who saw that video? And you saw the video and it laid on the floor. Brother, so you didn't see it. Uh, your wife saw it. She would show you, show, show him when you get home. And he laid on the floor and said, ah, I'm free from Buhari. <laughs> so when you get to heaven, you say, ha, ah, you are free from whoever it is that you wanted to be free from. So it's a place where you catch your breath, where you can have that freshness, not a sip of water. You can be refreshed. A place where you get a break. A place where you, I said during, evangel um, during Sunday school, you don't have to evangelize again. Every stone that couldn't have been won, that is, this is, I have told my, the family member you tried to win to Christ, that refused to come. That place, they would get their own de um, decision. So that's heaven. Heaven is where, I said the goal, the goal would have been gold. Every time in your life there is a goal, you know, you have an ambition, you want something to be done. And once you get that achieved, another thing comes up, right? You wanted to a nice car, you get a car, then you wanted a new property, then a second. But once you get to heaven, there is no more ambition. You can't look forward to anything again. It is the full stop. You know, it is not where you say, okay, last, no, it is, it is the conclusion. It is the, it is the end, whatever you are doing. You know, showing up in choir rehearsals, going to Sunday school, that is the, the, the full stop. That is the end of it, you know. That is where all of this that looks like is unending will end. That is where this face will wrap up, you know. I don't know if you have, there's nothing in your life you have ever done that comes to a full stop like that. Because once you think about, oh, at least I've not had all the children I wanted to have. Now you have to deal with raising them. But in that place, it is a place where, I hope I'll see Brother Boston. I hope Brother Boston would see me. I hope I'll cooperate with the Father to be on that side. So yes, I wanted you to be excited about heaven because it is the reward for your labor. Let's quickly talk about the nature. What you can look forward to. What can we desire, you know? Um, like the holiday story I shared, you know? My father didn't let me visit people a lot, but he would promise me a few things, buy me books and all of that stuff. But yeah, so but holidays were not really exciting for me. Um, but for other people who had richer uncles than me, probably, um, you can be sure your uncle will take you. I know people, uncles will take their nephews and nieces abroad, you know, for vacation and all that. So he can look forward to it. So let's talk about the nature of our own holiday. Just the holiday. This time it won't be temporal. Holiday is supposed to come back from holiday. Our own home, you know. Paradise is the father's house. The Bible says, in my father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I wouldn't have told you. So I, I go to prepare a place for you, John 14, 2. We'll read another one. Jesus told the thief, the thief on the cross that he would be with him in paradise. So how much more you, you know? Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4. Let's display that one. Paradise is a place that is wonderful beyond description. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. I have an uncle who is a redeemed pastor, um, and I love to listen to him. If he tries to sell a market to you, you buy it, you know? If he, if he talks about heaven to you, you're like, uncle, can we go tomorrow? <laughs> he's a pastor that you love to listen to. He, he just, you know, he, he's so good in describing. But I'm not sure I have that skill, but I'll do my best. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 says, How he was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words, which is, it's not lawful for a man to utter. So it's a beautiful place. You know, it's so tough to describe. It's not, I don't even think my uncle would do well in this one. It's so tough because it's not, a, it's not platinum. It's not gold. There, there are no, there are no human things, you know. Uh, have you gone, have you gone to a gold store in Dubai before? You know, and that's still like, 
stone when you compare to the real thing. Paradise of God is also said to be a dis, um, said to be a high and holy place. So it's for the pure at heart. That scripture that says, "On the mount of the Lord shall be um, deliverance." Is it holiness um, and deliverance? I wanted to emphasize that scripture because when people say that there's deliverance on the mountain of the Lord, they remove holiness. The mountain of the Lord is a holy place. It's a holy place. It's a holy place. It is where a dishonest skill is not acceptable. Because as much as I like to excite you, I must also make you carry the understanding of the requirements and the nature of that place. It's a beautiful place, but then like everything good in life, how many good things have you achieved without, you know, without sacrificing, without, you know, um, one of the things I learned in my first year of PhD was my, this, my, I think this was my research ethics and integrity class. Yeah, I wasn't sure. Which of them? Proposal development class. Anyway, uh, my lecturer said something that I haven't forgotten in years. So we, they would make us do presentations about our proposal and all that sort of thing. And it said in one day, it said, um, so we'll have 15 minutes, whatever. So you always struggle with every presentation. You're trying to beat time. And then it said, what good thing is not timed? It said, it said because it, if, it, if it is quality, you must be able to achieve it in this certain time. Do you understand? And so one of the things I learned from that first year was to make sure that my highest is on the time, to deliver the best within the shortest time possible. And you don't know how short or how long your time would be, right? So make sure you're delivering the best quality of life. You are living, you are sowing as much seed as possible. You wouldn't be here forever. So your trip here is very timed. And so the same thing, the quality of that place you are going to requires that you are holy. You know, that you are pure, that you are pure. You are not pure until you're sexually pure. You're going to really hear me use that word pure without saying that. <laughs> so get used to it. So that you are pure, whatever it is, impurity that you have, that you are pure. On the mountain of the Lord is deliverance, but there's also holiness. There is no sin, you know. Uh, years ago, I heard Bishop TDJ said something. He said, you know, I can say that you can fornicate. I can say that you can fornicate and get away and go to heaven. I can say you can steal and, you know, adjust the books, cook the books like they say in accounting and get yourself to heaven, you know. I can say you can cheat and get to heaven. I can say you can adjust the scale and get to heaven. He said, but that would be Bishop T.D. Jake's heaven. It won't be God's heaven, okay? So in God's heaven, the fanciest of preachers that says you can get away with stuff, they won't be there to defend you. You know, it doesn't matter how a preacher goes on about a subject. When we get, you know, um, who had a, a mother who was a teacher and had to mark script for their parent? Do you have any that experience? You had to mark script for your parent. So they tell you, or objective, A, B, C, D. When you get to B, if it is not B, you will get it wrong. You can ask, ah, but my textbook said it was C. But the book I read, but as far as I have the marking script, question two, the answer is B, and you do not say B. So it doesn't matter how a pastor, how you choose a liberal pastor, a convenient pastor, a convenient mentor, someone that says, you know, that broadens the way for you, you know, you know, you are so, you are not comfortable with the narrow way. You know, you don't like the way, the way is too, the way, they don't like the narrow way. So you go to a church where they make the road a little, you know, broader, you can get away with stuff. When we get to heaven, it is the standard, it is God's marking scripts that will matter. Not the one that pastor said, you will be convenient in this world, by the way, you know, but once we get on that side, Paradise has the tree of life, and it was said in our memory, uh, and Rev chapter 2, verse 7. It has the tree of life. It is a peaceful place. It's also a place that those who have faith in the Lord will enter immediately at death. Let's read Acts chapter um, 7, 55 to 56. Acts 7, 55 to 56. Paradise is a place of bliss and happiness. But he, being fully, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God and said, look, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. So yes, it's a place those who have faith can, would be, will be, you know, they would see God. Paradise is a place of bliss and happiness. Like I said, it's a place where you are, you catch your breath. You are not even catching, you think you are breathing, you are not breathing, no. <laughs> It's a place where you finally catch your breath for real. It's a place where you breathe. You have not been breathing. You know, you think you are breathing, but it's a place where 
You can put everything behind. No pressure. No one's going to call you from home and say, this part of your life has not been resolved. You know, when are you going to do this? You know, when will you buy a car for your wife? There, no, there will be no, no such thing. It's a place of bliss and happiness. And you have no idea. And no one on earth currently can describe to you that bliss and happiness. It would seem to be an intermediate place um, as opposed to our final establishment. So it would be where we all go to initially. Um, why the head has been tormented. Uh, between the new, as opposed to the final establishment of a new heaven and a new head, which will be our final, final, final home. But when we discuss this subject, make sure you just get yourself there first. Then you, dis, you determine how, you, you, how the rest, but make sure you get yourself into paradise. There's no need to worry about what happens after death. So at, at that stage, you can't worry, you know, about who you preach to and did not give their life to Christ. You would have done your very best. You would have you would have done your very best. You would have, there will be no more soul to win, basically, at that time. And to emphasize, let's read Revelation chapter 21, verse 27. The inhabitants of the paradise are, of God are holy. And you can see holiness is coming up over and again. And one of the nicest ways to define holiness is total submission to the will of God, or submission to God. But there shall be by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie. But only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Only those who are written in the Lamb book, Lamb's book of life. You know, it won't be, there won't be certain people that need to clarify their status. Your, your name either be in that book or not. You know, it's not going to be unclear like people that need status needs to be resolved that i think they gave their life to christ but maybe at the last minute the way they were doing just all of you just stay on this side first we will come back to you just you know there will be no such thing that's like i said before it would be either a or b and as i say it myself it scares me i carry the weight of that message in my heart that on that day they will not say ah, sanika they used to preach oh. Maybe there would be some leeway. She used to be, you know, ah, she tried in church now. You know, she used to, ah, don't you used to hear her voice when they are singing praise worship? Just stay on this side. Maybe we can talk to Oga. We'll talk to Oga. Maybe they can consider. No. It will not be, ah, and I gave in church, oh. I gave money. Shouldn't that make, you know, that's not going to happen. It's just going to be, hey. It, it, once they check the book, say, daddy, please check the last page again. Ah, it, ah, it has to be there. I'm looking. Uh, what did you say your name was? Are they I'm looking. He's not here. My dear is not here. He's not here. Maybe check the appendix, you know, where they write the computer code. Maybe he's at the back. So he's not here. It's either it is here or it is not. So whatever you are doing, whatever race you are running, make sure your name is there because it won't matter. And you do not serve devil all this way. So it will be a bad loss. Whatever you do, whatever you do, make sure your name is here. It would be sad. So labor all these years. Give yourselves all these years. And then they look at that book. They say, well, maybe it's very big, that's why. No, you know in computer, you can do control S. So they will control S it if it's not appearing. Whatever you are doing, get yourself, get your name in that book. Whatever it is that is going on in your current life, you're trying to take a shortcut. And you so say you get your feet back. And the devil is always trying to attract more. You know, once you do, you do one, you are likely to go back. So whatever it is you are doing, Let's talk about the benefits. We talked about the nature. It's a beautiful place. It's where the tree of life grows. The benefit of being in the paradise is that it, um, the paradise of God has the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. You know, the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Revelation chapter 22, 2 to 14. 2 and 14. And then we'll do Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 12 after that. Two says in the middle of its street and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each, each, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. 14. Blessed that those who do his commandments, that they may have the rights to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. Ezekiel chapter 47 verse 12. Along the bank of the river, on this side and that, will grow all kinds of trees used for food. Their leaves will not wither and their fruit will not fail. They will bear fruit every month because their water flows 
from the sanctuary. Ah, ah, what a beautiful place. I don't want to say I can't wait to be there because I have to. But it's a place to look forward to. No longer will there be anything at cost, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it. And his servant will worship him. We'll worship him. The saints will see the face of the Lord. Face to face, we'll behold his face. You know, we that we have been hoping, we that believed without seeing, you know, you get to finally see. You know, they, keep, they keep telling you that ah, there is this man, you know, just wait, you will see him. He's real. You say, Abba, I can't see him face to face. So he's real. He exists, you know. He's real. So one of the reward that you believed that he exists without seeing is that you finally see. So you see now, I told you. Look now, didn't I tell you? You will see. Face to face, you will behold his face. Might will be no more. Like I said, there will be no evangelism. There will be no soul. There will be nothing. There's nothing to desire again. You would have gotten to a place of the bus stop. You would have gold the gold, you know. There will be nothing to be ambitious about. I'm sure you currently have a to-do for this week. There will be no to-do. Imagine how would you even cope? Not having to be ambitious about something. No goals, no property, no investment, nothing to acquire. Ha! How are you going to adjust? Nothing to desire again. Nothing. You don't have to be doing, trying to do anything. Do you understand? You don't have to be, you know, you know like you get to everyone, I'm like, ah, I cannot relate with that person you know, so that they will not send me back. No, you will not be trying to. You will not be trying to. You will be in a place of rest. You will be in a place, you know, when you first, when you finish a race initially, you are panting and say, ah, 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 brother, so I got to heaven, I got to heaven. Then after that, you rest and you relax. There will be nothing to desire again. It will just be a place where you are beholding the Father, a beautiful place. I'm trying to imagine, if I ask you to close your eyes, let me be a psychologist for a moment. <laughs> let me make an attempt at being a psychologist. If I ask you to close your eyes, I may not close mine though. And imagine the most beautiful thing you ever desired that came through. Just imagine, because I can't give you an example because we all have different stories. Just imagine for a moment the most beautiful thing, the most beautiful thing that you ever desired and came through, that came through for you. Now imagine for a moment, something far much more, much more, much more, much more beyond your imagination. You can open your eyes. How was my attempt? You can open your eyes. Oh, how was my attempt? Did it, I try? Should I, <laughs> should I give the career a go? Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, and that's how beautiful everyone would be. Right. There'll be no nights, there'll be no day, there'll be no clocks. There will be no more sin or the sorrow that sin brings. There will be no more illnesses. Blah, but we won't have that job again because we will not need doctors, right? Aha. Uh -huh. Nurses, you won't need your services again. There's nobody to tend to in heaven. The greatest of these sorrows is death, which would have been conquered at this stage. Isaiah chapter 25, verse 8. Isaiah chapter 25, verse 8. Then we'll do 1 Corinthians 15, 54. So that's the kind of place we are going to. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. The rebuke of his people, it will take away from all the hurt. For the Lord has spoken. 1 Corinthians 15, 54. So, when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and these mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that it is written, death is swallowed up in victory. You will not have the fear of losing any loved one again. The only sorrow would have been that you'd have lost them. So, you know, if you had, if, whichever way they place they chose to go to. I know that in, currently we, we want to bring your loved one to Christ. You want to win them over to the Father. You want to do your very best to win them over to the Father. You want to, you know, but once that time comes, they would have to face, um, the consequences of their decision. Once that time comes, they will be left with the consequences of their decision. You would, there will be no more room to say, and I said, and I, you know, and I, no. You will preach now, they would say, come unto Christ now, you know. It's like, it, it would look like the Noah's Ark, you remember? They said, try to come, you know. There is a flood. Rain is coming. It's a very rich flood because there was no evidence. And that's how Christianity is, if you look at it. So come in, come into this Ark. There is, flood is coming. Rapture is coming. God will come, you know. I used to say that it doesn't matter how much you try to not believe that truth. Once it comes, 
it will just say pam and that is it you know if my one of my contacts used to joke that but when it comes will it come at the same time what of us we, we are at the back we should be able to quickly adjust you know say so we just quickly you know adjust and get ourselves together can we not start from the front maybe from the top people like my husband will you not start from dr sakwe you know he's very tall and with that we are more brief you know we can quickly put ourselves together no <laughs> it will come at the same time it will just have you have you written, when last did you write an exam it's been a while i wrote an exam and you're writing with pencil whatever it is I don't i out any time recently well and then they say time up when they say put your pencil down once they say put that pencil down it is whatever you have come with thus far you won't get a chance again that's what we are looking forward to a day where we will all put our pencils whatever it is your tool is stethoscope like robot so or pencil computer whatever it is your tool of work is you put that pencil down and you can't do any much more again it is that place you are looking forward to that you can't desire anything again there's nothing to wish for you don't want to buy anything there's nothing to buy there's nothing 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 absolutely nothing to buy but you have access to this paradise like i said before you must have repented you must have confessed of your sin you know you must have put your trust in christ and various and it's very essential a fearful expectation awaits those who are not on god's side you know in the, moment, the way you couldn't imagine how beautiful heaven is is the same way you can imagine same way you can imagine how dreadful hell is and i wish i would not be there you know when that when they say put your pencil down me teaching on the school will not matter i will not be ah, did bro did you did you did, did you find his way in I'll, I'll not even care sorry if my husband at that time it would be maybe second i don't know how it will pan out but i would first of all care you know i don't you see how when you are running a race and they put the mark and you just want to strive strive to put your leg over the mark once they blow that trumpet you it's not one leg oh say ah, but my, no it will be two legs you must have crossed fully with your two legs so whatever you are doing coming to church come you know as frequently as you like make sure that you do the work of the father on earth and make sure that you put your legs your two legs over the line you must be an end time overcomer you must survive this end time that we are where the temptations are just numerous you must for you to cross with your two legs for you to get on the other side it must be an end time overcomer and one of the things that i recommend is to develop your prophetic sign side every christian even if you're not a prophet on, on your own you must be able to develop your prophetic side in the end time we should be able to receive the message from the father and be receiving confirmation develop your prophetic side to cross over in this end time where there are rumors of these rumors of that you must be able to hear god clearly for yourself if you are not hearing god it is a sign that something is wrong in your spirituality christianity is not your proof that you are a christian is not that you show up in church every sunday is that you can hear god that not too many things are happening in, around you without any word from the father that is the sign that of backsliding Everything is happening. This is happening. You no, know, no sign, no signal, nothing. Ah, so what are you now doing? You know, well, how do you say it's a spiritual race then? So develop your prophetic side. Love God the way God wants to be loved. You know, I've shared that here before. Make sure you are not loving God just the way you want. You know, just adjust it here and there. How does God want to be loved? We all know in marriage that you try to love your partner the way they want to be loved. And that's, that's only when they see that you love them, right? Not because you feel like doing this. Love God. And by loving God the way God wants to be loved, means that you are doing, you are obeying his scriptures. You're not doing, you're not, you not giving your, your, your flesh, you know, to vile things. You're not in wild parties. The Bible speaks against those things. That you're not using a dishonest skill. That you're not fornicating. You're not committing adultery. That's how God wants to be loved. So it's not so hard. As long as you love God, <clears throat> excuse me, the way you want to be loved. And I think our activity says we should mention the conditions that must be met before people enter to heaven. I think we've done justice to that. Um, I think we have done that. We have talked about it. Be holy. Stay pure. You know? Live holy. If you miss heaven, which is paradise, you can guarantee that you will not miss hell. If you miss heaven, you can guarantee that you will not miss hell. 
like I said, it's going to be A or B. So everyone could be here and whatever is B. I want to ask you a question as I wrap up today. As we all look forward to heaven, a place of rest where we can catch our breath, pant and say, yeah, finally, we did it. We, got, we, we can get access to fresh water. I want to ask you a question today. As we wrap up, media. My question for you today is, when the trump of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair, when the saved of her shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, will you be there? When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. I love the last stanza. Let's take it. Let us labor for the master from the dead until sets and sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Quiet, you can get ready. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder, when they mark the register, will you be there? When the will they find your name in the book of life? Will all of this amount to anything? Will it be worth it? When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Father, I pray today that you will put the burden of your second coming into the hearts of your children. That we will not be carried away by the distractions of this world. That you will cause us to develop our prophetic side. That we will be end time overcomers in this time. I ask that you will put the consciousness of your coming, of doing your will until then in our hearts. In Jesus' name. Let's take that chorus again. When the roll is called up yonder.